In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the garter stitch toe for toe up socks. You can jump to a specific section of the video by tapping or mousing over the video playback portion of your screen to reveal the chapter titles of each section and their starting points. Or you can use the timestamp links down in the video description. Most toe up socks are begun with a couple of stitches and you immediately begin working in the round and increasing every other round in order to shape the toe. This toe is quite different. The way this toe is formed is by creating a square of garter stitch. And along each side of this square, one fourth of the stitches are knit. So when you begin working in the round, you have the full number of stitches that you need for the sock. So the entire foot of the sock, except for the beginning square, is knit on all of the stitches that you need for the foot. So what I'm gonna show you is how you get started with a sock like this. And then at the end, I'll show this sock on an actual human foot and talk about how it fits and how it feels when it's worn. And I'll also so show you some variations in how this toe can be used. So in order to cast on, I would recommend, you don't have to, but I would recommend either using Judy's Magic Cast On, a Figure Eight Cast On, or the Turkish Cast On. All three of those are cast on methods that involve holding a pair of needles parallel in order to establish stitches, uh, the same number of stitches on both needles. And they're most easily done if you are, have access to a circular needle or two circular needles. If you don't have access to a circular needle, um, you can use a, any kind of provisional cast on you would like using double pointed needles. Now this is only for the cast on. If you do not want to use a circular needle for knitting the actual sock, that's fine. We only absolutely need it for this particular cast on method. What you wanna do is cast on one quarter of the total number of stitches that you need for the, the circumference of your, of your sock foot and you want a quarter of those stitches on one of these needles and a quarter on the other. So for example, if you want to knit a sock with 64 stitches, once you are working in the round, you will have 16 stitches on the upper needle and 16 stitches on the lower needle. So I'm using very big yarn and very big needles. So I am going to knit a sock that has 24 stitches. So I only need six stitches on each of those needles. So I have links to this cast on method down in the description as well as to the other cast on methods that I named. So this is not a tutorial on Judy's Magic Cast On. Um, this is a tutorial on the garter toe and I am using Judy's Magic Cast On to do that. So I'm measuring out a tail that should be enough to create the stitches on one of the needles. Now I have one stitch on that lower needle and now I'm going to create a stitch on the upper needle using the lower yarn. And again, I have a link to a tutorial for Judy's Magic Cast On down in the video description. And I will also link to it at the top of the video screen here. So I've got three on each, four, four, five, five, six, Six. We are going to knit back and forth across this upper needle. So we are going to turn the needles so that the back of this faces us. What you see here is we have pearl bumps across the back. We also have these two strands of yarn. So we want to look at the one that's the tail. That is going to hang down. And we want the one that is the working yarn. We want these two things to cross and link together so that we can bring the working yarn to the back where it needs to be in order for us to knit. This is where we pull the lower needle out so that these stitches on that lower needle will just rest on this cable for quite a while. So we're only going to be working back and forth across these stitches. So 
If you have a circular needle but do not enjoy using circular needles and prefer double pointed needles, this is the time when you could just start using your double points and just leave these stitches sitting on this circular needle. So I've knit the first row and I'm just gonna turn and I'm gonna knit back in the other one. So we're just knitting garter stitch, knitting every single row back and forth. At this point, I have five garter stitch ridges. You can see these ridges, one, two, three, four, five. I got one right under the needle. And if I look on the other side, I have one, two, three, four, five on this side as well. So I wanna continue creating this garter stitch square until I have as many ridges on each face of the fabric as I have stitches on the needle. So I have six stitches on the needle. So I need six ridges on each side. So every time I knit across a row, I create a ridge on the side of the fabric that's facing away from me. So it takes two passes to create uh, ridges on both sides. Now we can see one, two, three, four, five. I have six ridges on this side and I have six ridges on that side. I, I keep the side facing me. I want to pick up one stitch for every one of these ridges along that edge. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. We're gonna do this in a way that creates a very flat joint so that there's no bulk on the inside. So I'm using large needles so I can use a smaller needle. If you are using sock weight yarn, you are probably going to have to use a double pointed needle that is the same diameter as the needles that you're knitting with. You can use the needle that's that's holding all of the stitches down here. You can use this. So this was the original direction of knitting. And so if we look at the side edge, we can see that every one of these ridges, there's kind of a triple bump. We can see this bump, this bump, and this one here. So this is kind of the mo uppermost bump of the three when we look at it in terms of the direction of the original knit. So I'm gonna take my double pointed needle and I'm going to thread it through all of those top bumps of the triple bit. Now this one at the very bottom that's connected right here is, is going to be a little trickier because it's connected to this live stitch. But in, so in this case, I'm just going to slip that through that stitch right there. And then I'm going to go through these uh, upper bumps for each one. If you haven't done this kind of picking up along a garter stitch edge before, I would recommend trying it out on a bulkier yarn first. So just so that you get the, the hang of seeing where those bumps are. So now what you're going to do is knit across all of those stitches. So if you are using double pointed needles, you can leave these stitches on one double point and you can work across this as a double point. If you're using one long circular or two circulars, you want to have um, these stitches be on the same half of the round that these live stitches are on. So you just knit across those stitches that are sitting on the needle like they were regular um, stitches that you wanted to knit. So if you are using Magic Loop, that's when you would pull this needle out of those stitches and then you can put this needle through the stitches that are at the base of that garter stitch. So again we're going to knit across all of these stitches and this one looks a little different because that was that original stitch that I first cast on. It wasn't a slip knot, it was just a loop on the needle. So this one uh, looks a little bit different and it will be, it will twist as it comes off. So once again, we wanna pick up one stitch for every one of these ridges. And since this was the original direction um, that the knitting uh, was done in, we can look for those, uh, those triple bumps again uh, from this edge as well.
We just count to make sure we have the six stitches so that we haven't skipped one of the ridges. So now I have all of the stitches on the needle and because I'm using the magic loop technique, I have half of them um, on one half of the needle and half the stitches on the other. And at this point, I can work in the round on all of these stitches just as they are. So I cast on in this example, uh, assuming I wanted 24, but let's say I wanted 26. How would I handle that? Well, one way would be to, to do just what I did with the, the six stitches and creating 24 stitches in the round. And at this point, when I work this round, I could add one stitch on the one half of the round and one stitch on the other half of the round. The other thing that you can do is that instead of working six ridges, I could have worked seven ridges. And that way I would have had six stitches on my needle. I would have picked up seven. So then I would have 13 for each half of, of the round. So if you need a number of stitches that's not a multiple of four, you have two choices for how to handle that. So this is my foot in one of these socks. And you can see that this doesn't cover very much of the toe at the top. I have maybe an inch worth of sock coming down here. And then I have the full number of stitches. And I was not convinced that this would work very well when I tried it because I am used to having um, the sock be shaped starting from this point on up and gradually getting smaller and smaller. And so this se seemed like it would be too many stitches at this point. But because of the way garter stitch works, it compresses where there's no tension on it. At the top of my foot here, where this curve is, the garter ridges are separating, but then here along the edges, they're compressed more. So that helps to pull these stitches in a bit. So uh, the sock foot is knit with negative ease. So it's knit to be smaller than uh, my foot right here. So it's not too big as it goes up here. And then again, the garter stitch helps to kind of pull those stitches in. So these fit me just fine. I was really surprised at how how well that this sock toe actually fit me. What I was wondering about was what it would feel like because garter stitch certainly has more texture to it than stockinette. Stockinette's a very flat fabric and garter stitch is not. And what I will say is that I am aware of the difference. The first time I put them on I could feel that they were different but they don't bother me. However, if you are knitting for somebody who has very sensitive feet, some people can't even stand having the pearl side of the fabric on the inside of their soles and they have to knit their, the soles of their socks so that the knit part is uh, facing the skin. So if you're knitting for somebody who has very sensitive feet, this may not be the best toe for them. It may fit them just fine, but they may not like the way it feels. So this is a swatch that was knit exactly like the one I just showed you in a solid color. So this type of toe can work really well in a solid color, um, but it works really well in variegated or tonal yarns as well. So this is a sock that's knit with fingering weight yarn, and you can see that it works really well for something like that. If you wanted to do a contrast toe, what I would suggest is that after you have all of the stitches on the needle and you're working in the round, to work in the round for say another inch before you switch to your main color, because that could look a little strange if you just had only that little bit of fabric in the contrast, but it's totally up to you. It's your sock. You can do what you want. I really like myself striping socks to match exactly with the stripes going up. So when I was knitting these, I made a lot, <laughs> put a lot of effort into making sure that I knit both of these socks exactly the same. I had the correct half of the round. Um, maintained as the instep and the other half of the round making sure that that was the sole for both socks. But what happened when I put them on was I realized that my feet are not symmetrical. So when I am wearing this sock 
on this foot, the orange part is over my toe. And then when I'm wearing this one on my other foot, the blue part is on my upper toes. So these socks are exactly alike as I intended them to be, but what I really should have done was to make them mirror images so that when I was uh, wearing the two socks that my big toes would be either both in the orange part or they would both be in the blue part. But that again is totally optional. Some people don't even care if their socks match each other. So that's just something, if you are picky about that kind of thing, to keep in mind. I often mention that there are always multiple ways of getting to the same end point in knitting. In the case of the garter stitch toe, there are multiple ways of getting started. This playlist over here contains all the cast on methods I mentioned could be used to start the toe. This playlist down here contains all of my sock related videos. While most are focused on cuff down sock construction, many are applicable to socks knit in either direction. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.